I started my journey in Persistent Systems, which is a service-based company. And from the day I wrote my first Hello World program, it took me three years to land a job at RCCM and another year to get into Microsoft. I made countless mistakes along the way, which made my path to become software engineer at product-based companies longer than it should have been. I watched a lot of YouTube tutorials, paid for multiple Udemy courses, and I learned a lot of things that didn't really add any value. That made me question myself. Can you become a software engineer at product-based companies is way faster and the answer is 100% yes today i will remove all the useless fluff and give you the fastest path to go from a beginner to software engineer at product based companies before i begin there are three major mistakes that can slow down your progress to become a software engineer at big tech companies i will share these three mistakes along the way so stay tuned for that as a beginner the first decision to make is which programming language to learn i personally started with c++ but is that the best language to start in no is there any other language that i would have started in also no in C++, you have to write a lot of code to get anything done. And it is difficult to build even simpler projects in C++. But writing code in C++ forces you to follow the computer science fundamentals like defining variables, understanding pointers, memory management, and a lot of different things, which in turn will make you a better programmer. But because of this, it is really verbose that you have to write a lot of code to get any simple task done. Also, C++ is not the beginner-friendly language. You may not have all that time to spend on a single language. So I would rather suggest you to start with Python. Python is almost as easy as writing in English and it is extremely faster to write code in Python when compared to other languages. That's because you can get the very complex tasks done with just small amount of code. As an example, here is the sample code written in Java versus Python. Python also has so many different applications like you can do web development, automation, data science and machine learning and lot more. Having said that, Java and other programming languages also have their own advantages. You will have to learn another programming language at some point of time in your career. For example, like I picked up Go language, Kotlin, Java and now C Sharp and a lot of different languages when I started working. So our main goal right now is to get started and not to be stuck learning the programming language. So I do believe that Python would be the best language to start with. Now that we know we should learn Python, but the question is, how do I get started? Well, this is the part where most beginners make their first major mistake that slows them down. The mistake most beginners make is they learn by watching others code. And even I kind of made this mistake. So I started watching tutorial after tutorial and I watched a ton of really long Python tutorials. And I thought, okay, now I know Python. But once I started coding, I actually realized that I did not make much progress. See, the problem here was that I was watching other people code without ever writing code myself but the only way to learn something is by doing it like i have seen virat kohli play cricket since i was a kid but that doesn't mean i play like virat kohli the same applies for coding you can use this amazing website learningpython.org where you can start from the basics and you can skip a lot of data science related topics like numpy pandas etc each topic goes over basic concept and then you can do some exercise to solidify your learning and finally once you feel comfortable with python it is time to build some simple projects you can use youtube i really like this free code camp channel they have some of the best programming related content on YouTube and they have a few videos like this 20 beginner Python projects or this really famous 12 beginner Python projects where you build some really basic projects and then move on to really complex tasks and once you have completed these sample projects you can actually move on to your own project also building your own project will help you learn about how to use an IDE like Visual Studio where you write the code and where you debug your code test your code and hosting your project deploying and everything plus you will have a portfolio of projects which you can host on github and which will help you build a solid resume Next, you need to learn data structures and algorithms because most of the tech companies currently ask data structures and algorithms during the interviews. So it is pretty safe to say that data structures and algorithms are really important. So how do you start? Start with learning about time complexity and space complexity. That is just a way to measure your algorithm in terms of speed and amount of memory it takes. The lower, the better. Next, you need to learn about all data structures like arrays, stacks, queues, linked lists, heaps, graphs, what they are and how you code them. After solving problems like like really simple ones like school level problems on practice.geeksforgeeks.com once you are comfortable with school level problems you can move on to easy level then medium level and after that you can switch to lead code because lead code easy problems aren't that easy and the best way to do it is to try to learn about data structure or an algorithm say binary search through youtube or geeks for geeks and try to solve as many problems as you can for that particular algorithm because these problems make you think out of the box and it isn't intuitive at first but once you start solving a lot of them 
you will figure out that there is a pattern for most of the problems. Also, if you aren't able to solve a problem or if you are able to solve a problem, still try to go and read the editorial or the discuss section of lead code because you will be able to find all the different approaches for the problem and maybe there is a much better approach. You can also solve problems based on what companies recently asked. It is mostly community driven. As far as I know, it is free in Geeks for Geeks, but you may be required to get a premium lead code account for this feature. And to learn data structures and algorithms, I would suggest you to pick up a tutorial, be it free tutorial on YouTube or paid one, whichever helps you get better understanding on the topic. On YouTube, I really like Abdul Bari's course on data structures and algorithms and I have seen a lot of his videos in the past. Try to solve a few questions a day, then you should be good to go. Also, once you start feeling good with data structures and algorithms, you should start applying to jobs. And this is where people make second most common mistake, trying to be perfect. They either don't apply for jobs or they start applying way too late. You'll always feel that there is something missing, that there is something left that you have to do. You need more time. And that's a constant feeling and you'll never get over it. That's how our brain functions. So it's better you apply as soon as possible and also try to apply to as many roles as possible. But before that, I would suggest you to make a really good LinkedIn profile. Try to fill out all the different sections. Add a nice profile picture, add your resume, add your skills and try to add as many keywords as you can. Because at the end of the day, LinkedIn is a search engine recruiter used to search for candidates. Like, I got my both interview opportunities via LinkedIn. Okay, so once you're done with that, try to reach out to your seniors, friends and recruiters for job opportunities or referrals, whatever works for you. And you also have an option to apply to companies via their career website. But the response rate from their portal is pretty less, at least in my experience. And referrals are the best way to apply for a job in my experience. And once all of this is done, you should be pretty much ready. And once you get the interview opportunity, if you are lucky, you will get the job right away. But for most of the people, it will be process of disappointment and rejections. And this is why they make third and the most biggest mistake of all. They quit. The main reason for people giving up early is because they overthink and complicate the interview process. After every interview, they will replay the entire interview over and over again and again in their head to figure out why they actually failed. And they take every rejection personally. My suggestion to you here would be, do your best to crack interviews, but try to be detached from the outcome of the interview. And if you want to know how I would start if I had to do all of this from scratch again, then you should check this video out where I was telling my strategy after all the ups and downs that I have faced.